Um, today I'm going to be talking about neck and shoulder pain, which for me has been uh, a, um, a big part of my life over the last few, last few months because I'm on the front line. Um, many, many people have been suffering from lack of movement, poor posture, etc. Um, obviously, many people are working from home. Uh, this, is a, this is a problem that so many people are suffering from. Uh, today, I'm going to try and do as much good as I can. So uh, stick with me. I've got a lot of information. I'm going to be flying through it pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. So if anybody has anything that they'd like to specifically talk about, then why don't you put it in the chat? I'll keep an eye on it and we can come, to, we can come on to it at the end. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Tim. I, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, I'm a doctor of chiropractic, the owner of Total Health Chiropractic. Um, when I came to Singapore 11 years ago now, I, I knew I was in the right place uh, because I, I just saw so many people suffering from bad posture. So I got busy and I wrote my book, Posture Matters, which has taken me uh, onto most stages in Singapore. And um, if anybody would like a copy, a digital copy of this book, then just let us know. Send us perhaps uh, your, an email and uh, we can bounce that right back to you and we'll attach a copy of, our, uh, of my book. Okay, so let's talk about health. Please understand that health is your greatest wealth. How do I know that? Well, you, so many people don't actually realize how important it is to them until they lose it. So I know that we all want a long life, I hope, anyway. Uh, we want to avoid disease and degeneration. We want to be energetic and vital. We want to be happy and we want to be comfortable in our own bodies. We want to be pain free. The problem that I see almost every day is that people are using medicine when they have pain and they're going to, to the medical people for their drugs, which to me is not the right thing to do. A long time ago, I, I, I had a choice to become a medical doctor or chiropractor. But when I realized that chiropractic is about getting the most out of life, it's about, it's about what makes us live, what keeps us healthy, then I realized that that's what I want to share with people. I didn't want to spend my life medicating people. I believe this is true healthcare, and this is my focus. Um, too many people in Singapore, and um, I'm sure that many of you, uh, because you're on, on this particular webinar, I'm sure many of you are, are also suffering from, from, from some aches and pains. I know I get them from time to time. Muscle stiffness, swelling, whether it be numbness and tingling, headaches, migraines, weakness, and fatigue. These are the top 10. These are the aches and pains that, that um, are endemic. Everybody seems to be suffering from, from them nowadays. So what I want to do is uh, I want to get inside your head a little bit. Uh, I, if I could teach you how to think like a chiropractor, not become a chiropractor, that takes many years, but to start to think like a chiropractor, I think it could be extremely beneficial to you. Um, I'd like you to consider your mindset. I like to consider what are your default actions when things start to go wrong? What do you do when you get pain? Do you just reach for the pill bottle or do you actually think about what your body is trying to tell you? We all have got a efficient shape. Too many people are losing their efficient shape, efficient shape and pain is nearly always the result. Our alignment is vital. And we're gonna talk about this uh, at length in a moment. Um, and what we do repetitively, what we do all day, every day, if you like, is gonna matter enormously. We also, please know that we're designed to move. And we've created this very unnatural world where we're not moving enough. What's interesting to me, and it's count, kind of counterintuitive, but I think you'll agree with me, but some of the most healthy people on this planet don't even exercise. Why is that? Because they don't, uh, they don't need to. They are constantly on the move. They have active lifestyles, whether they live in the country or whatever it is. I think you'll find these people are not sitting behind a desk at a computer all day, every day. If this is your life, then you need to have strategies to balance the damage that will inevitably be building up. So we've got to do something about this unnatural world that we live in, and we must do whatever we can to make our life more natural. So let's thinking about mindset. You know, um, to me, pain 
is a com my body communicating to you. I want you to think, what do you feel when you have some pain? Do you, like me, I think, oh, interesting. What, what's my body saying? Do I need to take the stone out of my shoe? Or do I need to change my posture or do some stretching? Too many people think it's there just to make life miserable. It's not. Pain is a good thing. We're going to have pain every day. Don't worry about that. But we can minimize pain by listening to it and then giving the body what it really wants. And that really is not pills. So we must get the basics right if we want uh, to be healthy. There are foundational pillars of health. And as a chiropractor, why I love chiropractic so much, we cover all of these. Nutrition, that's obvious. Exercise and movement, that's what chiropractic does. It restores movement. Sleep, chiropractic helps you sleep better. Reducing stress and having a positive mental attitude. A long time ago when I realized how positive and optimistic chiropractors are, I thought, oh my God, I just want to be like these guys. So that's when I went down my path towards chiropractic. Structural alignment. This is what we do in chiropractic. We are going to realign you. We're going to line you up with gravitational forces. And guess what? The pain will probably go away. And of course, we have to have a healthy nervous system. And for all of these, these foundational pillars of health, I believe we should all have a plan. And you know what they say, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So think about all these things. Do you have a plan? It's all about creating healthy habits. You'll find that the more healthy habits you have and the, least, the less bad habits, life is actually going to be more healthy. Okay. So many, many years ago, I was an engineer and I actually built that chimney you see on the right. And interestingly, when I realized that I wanted to apply the laws of engineering to the human body, I realized I could be onto something. You see, I think you, you'll agree with me that that lady in the middle there looks very comfortable. She looks comfortable in her own body. Well, if you look at the, the illustration on the left, you see that there's a line right down the middle. This is the line of balance. This is the gravity line or the central axis line, we used to say in engineering. Now, if we live our life close to this gravity line, Life's going to be good. We're not going to be building up tension and we're not going to have um, um, count, counterbalancing muscle spasms and things like that. You see, we are all columns as well, just like that chimney that I built. As far as I know, that chimney is still standing because I built it very tall and straight. So the gravitational forces are equal. It's balanced. If we can live our life like that chimney, tall and balanced, then we stand the greatest chance of living without, without pain. Now, now I've changed that lady's head for a bowling ball. What's all that? Well, I just happen to have my bowling ball here today. There it is. Now, why have I got that? Well, some of you who've been bowling will know how heavy this really is. But if I hold it close to me, uh, close to this central axis line, it's quite easy. But if I pretend my head is going forward like that so now it's it's leveraging in here it's causing me a lot of pain already that's because when it's when it moves out of balance this bowling ball which is extremely heavy six kilos suddenly gets heavier it doubles in weight suddenly there's strain there's muscle there's muscle contraction as my body in this case my arm was trying to balance it well, if your bowling ball head goes forward as you go into bad posture, then things are out of al alignment. Things are out of balance. Tension is going to build up because it has to. Because there has to be as much contraction in the muscle to hold that ball. Okay? It's a balancing thing. Okay? So let's have a little look inside the neck. There's a lot going on in there. Look at all these muscles. If our neck has the right shape and we have a nice curve, our, our head is on our shoulders, then these muscles can be relaxed. Each muscle is functional. It's meant to hold us in a state of balance with our head on our shoulders. When the head goes forward, all these muscles go tight. Now, these muscles are meant to be functional. They're all attached to the, the head, the, the, the clavicle, the shoulder, and they are there to move the head and balance it. Quite simple, okay? Muscles contract, 
they move the bone. But if your head goes forward, they go into contraction all the time. So that then we get tight. Tightness is loss of function. Loss of function will always inevitably lead to deterioration. So let's have a look inside and what's going on. What happens if that heavy head of yours goes forward? Well, you lose the, the natural curve that your head should sit on because your, your neck should form a nice curve or a spring. So the weight of the head comes on. Now you can see in this illustration, as the weight has moved to the right, the normal disc you see there is getting squished by the weight of the head. And then you see a bulging disc beneath that. What's happening there? Well, the disc is being compressed and it's being pushed backwards into the central canal where, that, where our spinal cord is, where our nerves are. Obviously, this is bad. We do not want bones or, or discs or, or anything like that impeding or, or, or infringing um, into the spaces where, where our vital, vital nerves are meant to be. You can see further down, there's a disc degenerating uh, because the lack of movement means there's lack of blood supply to the disc it's going to start um, to deteriorate. At the bottom there, you see a disc has actually failed. Lack of movement, wrong, um, wrong um, uh, uh, elination, wrong um, uh, representation, uh, sorry, relationship between, between the bones. And then you start to get these, these disrelationship and the disc is actually getting squeezed out of the back. And here you see it actually squeezing in and pressing in on the nerves. Here you see again, again, trapped nerves, osteophytes. You can see here osteophytes, they, they, that is the, um, the bones actually remodeling themselves. The forward head, more weight on the front of the bone means more bone is going to grow. It's just the way it is. It's a law of the universe. So we get unhealthy discs and eventually we get trapped nerves. Um, sometimes when, when people are uh, having a really bad time with the neck, we have to do x-rays. We know that. Uh, but here, what you see there is actually an MRI, um, which is where we actually see the soft tissue as well. Now, in the green box that you see there, you can see a disc that is starting to fail. The healthy discs are the, are the bottom of the neck. They, you, they're a little bit white. The more unhealthy ones are at the top. They're drying out. They're going black. And then you see the one in the box is, is now a slip disc. It's prolapsing or herniating. It's been squeezed out the back and it's in, now it's into that central canal where you see the spinal cord. So this is now becoming a very, very serious situation. And if, if this is not corrected very, very quickly, then this is gonna be surgical intervention. That is the last thing that we want. Surgical intervention in, involves cutting something out to allow that, um, that spinal cord to go around the disc, or it's going to be some kind of laser or cutting, trying to, trying to separate the disc, trying to cut that bulge out. It's not fixing the cause of the problem, but this is what we're up against almost every day in our clinics, trying to help people avoid this when people are developing this forward head. So every time we, we start to lose our balance, things start to happen, then pain is always the result. It might not be the first result. When people feel pain, quite often there's been deterioration for a long, long time. So as, as doctors, as chiropractors who need to help you make this correction, we want to get involved as early as possible. Obviously, the longer we are in poor posture, the more likelihood there's going to be deterioration. And this deterioration bioaccumulates it builds up, okay? So what about poor posture? Where does it come from? Well, well, we know that poor structure is poor alignment. Poor alignment is poor function. It's coming from the habitual positioning. So the most, most common habitual position that's causing this strain on the body is computer posture. I'm, I know that most of you will be on your computer right now. If not, you'll be on your phone perhaps, but either way, your head stuck in a screen. So why don't you right now um, lift your sternum, pull your head back, open your shoulders, take a big breath, put yourself into better posture. Try and remember what it feels like. 
Where is this stress coming from? Well, I mentioned the word before. It's coming from gravitational forces, which are there. They are laws of the universe that we cannot hide from. If we are balanced in gravity, then gravity makes us strong, gives us strong bones and strong muscles. But if we are out of alignment in gravity, then these gravi same gravitational forces will start to destroy our joints. And this is arthritis. And this causes premature aging and chronic pain. The last thing that we want to get into is chronic pain. We're going to give you plenty of things that, we, uh, the, that you can bring into your life at the end of this that can help you uh, avoid go slipping into chronic pain. Um, so reality check. If you're, getting some, if you're getting a little bit of pain, then look at your posture. What does it look right, right now? Maybe take an inventory of your body. Have a look in the mirror. Where is your head? Is it on your shoulders or is it moving forward? Because life is about adaption. We are constantly adapting. Once we've grown, we then adapt. When we're young, adaption is good. We're, we're growing into a new healthy body. And as we age, then our adaption is part of the aging process. Okay? But how will we age? Some people are blessed and they seem to age very well. Is that by chance? Well, there is a little bit of genetics in it, but there is a whole lot of habits. Lots of good habits will definitely slow down aging. Lots of bad habits on the flip side will definitely accelerate your aging. If you look at that, that illustration in front of you, the guy on the left, the little guy at the computer screen, he already looks unhappy. It looks like he's got a hot low back, his head stuck in the screen there, He's, got, he's already suffering from pain. If he does not correct this, and if he's sitting at his computer all day, every day, he will turn into that old guy with the two walking sticks. Okay, it's not pretty, and I don't want anybody who's, who's uh, listening to this to end up like this. We're not talking about um, a disease process that is inevitable, right? All I am talking about is avoidable. The problem is so many people, I mean, upwards of 50% of the people that, that uh, sit at computers all day will end up suffering terrible spinal arthritis, okay? This is a world of cause and effect, action and reaction. So let's be on the right side of, 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 the, of the seesaw. So we all have a structural blueprint. That means what kind of body are we going to move into? Is it going to be a body that gives us pain? Or is it going to be a body that gives us health and vitality into our golden years? If you look on the left, the guy uh, is, is balanced. His head's on his shoulders. As you move to the right, we see things getting a little bit worse. The second from the left, there's more of an arch in the back. He's, he's now developing a bit, a bit of a hunchback. More so in the middle, that's called a kyphosis. Uh, the head's gradually going forward more and more, more and more strain on the body person on the right the, the, their spine is twisting that way and that's called a scoliosis now this all will lead to muscle imbalance areas of tightness areas of compression inevitably this is going to lead to spinal arthritis and pain we don't want to go there so <clears throat> again take an inventory what is your spine going to look like if we if we took an um, if we took a um, uh, an x-ray and have a look at it, would it be straight? Would your head be on your shoulders? How about that nice curve in, in your neck? Or do you think already your head has gone forward and you're starting to suffer from, from a bit of a hunchback? Um, don't let it happen because what I'm talking about is inevitable. Your alignment in gravity will be the cause of most of your future physical pain during the course of your life. It will, okay? It's the way of the world. So if we can correct things now, you're, you're going to be ahead of the game. I mentioned this, this before. Damage, it starts slight. It builds up. It comes and goes. People tell me, oh, it's, it's on off. It's on off. It's not all the time. Well, that's good because once it becomes chronic and consistent and never goes away, we know we've got a much bigger problem. But do please start thinking about correcting the early causes of these problems because damage always bioaccumulates. It never, ever miraculously goes away. Okay? So what about the signs? What about the signs? 
How is your balance? Where do you get your tension? Why don't you write in your chat where you feel the pain? Is it headaches? Is it neck pain, shoulder pain? Are you restricted? When do you feel the pain? Is it at the end of the day or is it stiffness when you, you first wake up in the morning? If you look at these three characters, the one on the left has got the best chance. His head is on his shoulders. Fortunately, the guy on the right already has succumbed to hunchback, if you want to call it that way. It's actually called a hyperkyphosis in a more technical terms, but hunchback will do. You see how it's forcing the head forward. This person's going to be very, very stiff. This person is, in, is definitely going to suffer in the future. Okay, don't let it happen to you. We must all understand the basic physiology, the laws of the universe, if you like. I'm just going to run through. This is pure chiropractic here. Um, and I really want you to all make sure you understand this properly. You see, the brain, which is our life, our life is our nervous system working properly, um, has to communicate through the spine to all the organs, all the tissues and cells of our body. If, if all the bones of the spine, all the vertebrae, if they're all stacked up in alignment, then you've got the best chance. The spinal cord is going to be unimpeded. The nerve roots that leave the spine are going to be clear. And we're going to get clear information, two-way information, going from the brain to the organs and the cells and the organs and cells back to the brain. That's when you've got the best chance. The problem is, as we slide into poor posture, or it might be the result of a trauma. Have you had some kind of accident in the past? I don't know, but we all, we all have got our own bio-individuality. I've never seen two spines exactly the, the same. That's why it's important that we understand our own spine. But the nervous system, as we said, controls all the, all, uh, all the systems of the body. But what about the other things that have to flow through the body? What about breathing? What about your blood circulation again? This needs good alignment. If the body succumbs into poor posture, there is bad alignment. This will always, always, always affect the flow, the vital flow of blood, oxygen, and nerves. And I've, I've written at the bottom there, your spinal column, which is your spine, your, your bones, the discs, and the nerves, it all forms together a vital organ, which we must care for. And unfortunately, in this world, um, you know, this world is a, we are so far out of balance a, a lot of the time that um, we're losing the shape and function of our spine. So people are, are, are succumbing to this sitting disease, spinal deconditioning. Look at this illustration. You can just tell that this lady here is stiff. You can tell that all her organs are being compressed. Yes, she's going to have stiffness in the neck. She'll probably have headaches. Certainly, neck pain, shoulder pain, but it, actually her whole spine is going to be stiff. But more than that, eventually she's going to suffer other diseases due to lack of blood flow to her organs, to her tissues and cells. Okay? This is postural stress disorder or spinal deconditioning. So why do I talk about this so much? Well, people uh, are coming into our clinics earlier and earlier. This is a familiar posture that I know that, you see, that all of you see uh, almost every day on the MRT, you see in offices, etc. We, we're seeing our kids with their heads stuck forward in, in, um, in iPads and iPads. And if, when they're at home, they're, they're gaming or they've got their laptops out. It's a very familiar posture and it's, it worries me intensely because I worry about what these kids are going to be like in the future. We don't know what this generation are going to be like. We really don't. But I already I'm getting young people uh, as early as their late teens or early 20s coming into my clinic. They've lost the curve in their neck. They're already getting thinning of discs. They're getting the, the, the early stages of spinal arthritis. So there's young kids with neck pain and headaches and shoulder pain. It's starting very, very early. We've got to help our kids. We've got to be good examples, okay? 
we've got to show them that it matters, explain to them why it's so important that we bring them up in balance. Loss of balance is a loss of homeostasis. Every disease process that we may succumb to is when the body loses its, uh, its ability to, to restore balance or homeostasis. What you're seeing here is, is young people losing their structural balance, and this will always end up in structural disease, if you like, or arthritis. So I want to talk about this just for a moment because much of the pain that people suffer in the neck and the shoulders is due to this. It's called upper cross syndrome. Now what's happening here is as you see that this chap, the head is coming forward. As it comes forward, it gets heavier. So it's now being held by the muscles at the back. Those tight muscles across the shoulder of the neck are now hanging onto the back of the head. This guy's probably gonna get headaches. But what else is happening? Well, there is something called, called um, <clears throat> it's one muscle fires and one releases. Okay, it's called reciprocal inhibition. So we know in the illustration, this, this, um, this chap is gonna have tight shoulders at the back, but what you don't understand or may you don't realize is that the muscles at the back will cause weakness at the front. Let me demonstrate. If I bend my arm with my bicep, my tricep was canceled to allow the movement. Okay? One muscle fires, another is inhibited to allow the movement. This happens with all muscles. So if you've got tightness across your shoulders, you've got weakness at the front. This is why many people who have and end up with shoulder problems, lifting weights in the gym or whatever, it's because their shoulders are not in balance anymore. They've got tightness at the back and weakness at the front. So we really must bring people back into balance. We have many, many uh, athletes, elite athletes, and uh, amateur athletes come into our clinics because they don't want to get injured. They can't afford to get injured. They need to be in the gym. They need to be training. And for them to, to prevent injury, their body needs to be in balance, which means they've got to prevent things like upper cross syndrome. They cannot be letting their heads go forward. I hope that makes sense. If anything doesn't make sense, please pop it in the chat and I'll, uh, I'll mention it at the end. So let's talk about what we can do. Um, after this, I want to make sure you've got a, a, at least a few things that you can do that will start to reduce your pain levels tomorrow. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's just look at our ergonomics. Why don't you look at your ergonomics right now? Are you sat like me up with your head on your shoulders or are you already tired, it's the end of the day, you're, you're leaning into your screen? Now look at that, that girl on the left of the illustration, again, leaning forward in, in, into her computer. The girl on the left, guess what she's done? She's raised up the screen so her head can stay on her shoulders. Looks like she's using a, blue, a Bluetooth keyboard and Bluetooth mouse. Great. She's in balance. She's much happier. She's wearing a smile. So ergonomics, yes, it is the human factor in design. The science of fitting the workplace to the worker, if you like. Or perhaps it's the science of fitting the worker to the workplace. It's wh whichever way you look at it. But it's very, very important because we, we, the things that we do all day, every day, remember, matter enormously. So let's just make sure... We, are, we have our workstation set up so we can reduce the pain. Our head wants to be upright and above our shoulders. Our eyes should be looking forward or slightly down. We don't want a low screen that's gonna drag us forward like that. Our shoulders should be relaxed and down. You shouldn't be wearing your shoulders up here. They should be relaxed and down. So how do we do that? Well, we might have an armrest, which you, here we see the armrest is the same height as the table. It's taking the weight of the arms. That'll be a good thing. Here you see the back, there's a backrest that's taking the pressure off the low back. Uh, the, this chap is sitting at the back of the chair and um, you, you see that the wrists are in neutral. The elbows and knees are at 90 degrees, so there's not too much restriction of blood flow. Thighs horizontal, feet supported, um, especially if you've got short legs, you'll want those feet supported so your legs are not heavy on the back. Of the chair okay it's a very simple thing once you once you once you set up correctly let your body memorize it so that when it's set up incorrectly alarm bells will ring 
I know that many people are using a laptop. There are solutions. I use my laptop almost every day, but I have a laptop stand. You see my, my stand on the, on the left at the bottom there? That's my stand. I bring it up. So um, when I use that, I also use Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Um, it's very, very simple, inexpensive solutions that will help you because for most of you, the pain, the stiffness of, of neck and shoulder is mostly coming from poor alignment, lack of movement, and the shape that you hold yourself in all day, every day. Okay. Ergonomics is super, super important. So let's move on to some simple, simple exercises that um, I think most of you, um, hopefully you, you know some of these, but let's run through them because they're very simple. They are easy to apply and they do work. I've picked the ones that will definitely help you. If you've got tightness at the back of your neck, okay, your head's been stuck in a, in, in a computer all day, maybe you've got a headache, simply create a neck roll. Maybe roll up a towel, put it in there and lie on it. It's going to help restore the natural curve in the neck. It's going to it's going to it's going to help um, press against the back. It's going to actually create a sort of a trigger point area. You can roll your neck from side to side while it this has this better shape. That's going to massage the back of your neck. It's going to feel good. Okay. Simple, simple, simple solutions. Your tight neck needs to. Um, uh, we've got to stop it losing our range of motion. Remember, stiffness means loss of function. We've got to stop losing function. So we want to stretch out our neck in the six ranges of motion. So our neck moves in six directions, forward, back, sideways, sideways, and two rotations. So do stretch it out every day. Lift your sternum, pull your head back. You, you'll hear me saying this all the time. And then take your head through full range of motion. Make sure you're not stiffening up, okay? As you, if you stiffen, you will start to age more rapidly. We do not want that. I'm sure you agree. So your shoulders, let's stretch those out. Get some movement in there. What do we do? Well, why don't you stre stre uh, stretch them to the roof? This is great. What am I, what, what am I doing there? I'm putting an arch in, in my back. I'm lifting my sternum. I'm creating space in my chest. What else can you do from there? Well, you can go from the side to the side. This is putting mo motion in your whole spine. What else can you do? Well, you can, I've got a little routine that I, uh, um, I run through uh, probably a couple of times a day. Um, but whenever I feel tension, if I'm, if I'm doing a lot of writing, then I, uh, then I will run through this little routine. Um, you will love this. Y-W-L-T. What am I talking about? Well, let's make a Y with our arms. So I'm, what am I doing? I'm opening things up, right? It's, it's, I'm opening up a chest so I can breathe better. Pulling the shoulders back. This is the Y. You can then drop down to the W. You're making a W with your arms. Go ahead and pull your shoulder blades together. You know, I've just started this already. I'm feeling better. I can breathe better. It's tension coming out of my shoulders. From there, you drop down to L. You will love L, L. So I've dropped down. I'm now bringing my thumbs out. I'm pulling my shoulder blades together. Feels really good. It's opening my shoulder blades, uh, my, my, my shoulder joints here. And then you can go to T again. Um, externally rotate your thumb, open your shoulders. This is the T. Y, W, L, T. It's easy. It's a very simple little routine. Why don't you put YWLT on the side of your computer to remind you? I hope some of you have tried that, but go ahead and try it tomorrow. It does work. It always makes you feel better. So what else? Well, there are some golden rules that you must follow when you stretch. Try and stretch slowly and gradually. Don't, don't do it too quickly. Whoa! You're going you're gonna to pull something, okay? We're dealing with tight tissues. We need to tease them. We need to stretch them. Um, gently, we need to be careful with our body, okay? So um, um, don't bounce when you do these stretches. Some pe I see people on the golf course that go to the first tee and they put a, they put a golf club behind their, their, their neck and they start stretching like this, bouncing, 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 and it makes me cringe. Oh, my God, I want to give them my card because they're likely to pull something. 
do it gradually. What about pain? Should you stretch into pain? No, but you should stretch into slight discomfort. Remember what we're doing. We are increasing our comfortable range of motion. So stretch into, um, into slight discomfort, okay? No matter where it is. So you might want to perhaps stretch for five seconds. And then just, just I've just got a slight stretch in there. No discomfort at all. But then, now my body's accepted, I can then go further. Okay, so perhaps do it in, in two sections. Five seconds and then further, okay? Learn how to feel the stretch. Feel that stretch. So what else? Um, because of posture, computers, a typical computer posture, if you like, is, um, involves rigidity in the thoracic spine. That's the mid-back here between the shoulder blades. Uh, I get it because I spend a lot of time leaning over clients. So what do I do? Well, you can see what I'm doing there. That's me on the left-hand side. I've got a foam roller in there, it's a firm foam roller, and I'm extending over it. It's opening up my chest. I, I, might, I might move up and down. I might actually roll up and down. I might feel little clicks and pops from my back, which is good. It's just, it's okay. It's tension coming out. You might, if I find a particular spot where there's a lot of tension, I'm going to spend a bit more time there. So I might spend a few minutes actually in extension. If you're spending all day, every day in flexion, you're going to be a hunched old man or old hunched old lady. Don't let it happen. Spend some time in extension, okay? Remember, health is all about balance. So what else do we need to do? Well, obviously, if we're going to prevent um, pain building by developing this forward head, we've got to bring our head back into our shoulders, onto our shoulders. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to strengthen the muscles of our neck. Here you see, this is my tool. I've got a resistance band, and I simply pull that and I pull back. Very, very simple. You see the lady on the, in the illustration on the right, she's got a resistance band. The lady on the left, she's use, simply using a towel. She's pulling forward and she's pulling back with her neck. Again, do it carefully, build up, build, build up um, the, the force gently, uh, no pulling of muscles, okay? But this will work. How long do you do it for? Oh, why don't you do it for five seconds? Do it five times, do it every day, okay? And you will, after a few weeks, start to notice that your head is starting to move back on your shoulders as the muscle gets toned. Muscles should have, the muscles of your neck should have a, a slight state of contraction as they're doing their job holding your head on your neck, okay? You can wake up those muscles. So this is something that we work with uh, in, in our clinics, and it's something that, uh, that, that we give to our clients to help them restore that natural curve. Remember, that curve, we call it the, the, the arc of life. It's absolutely vital. That curve forms a spring for your, for your heavy head to sit on or a shock absorber, okay? If we, lose, if we lose the curve, there will always, always, always be deterioration, degeneration, and pain, okay? If you have pain in the neck or the shoulders, you are probably losing this natural curve. So this is what we use. Um, it's very, very simple. They're highly engineered. They work extremely uh, effectively, uh, so much so that they, they work pretty much 100% of the time, as long as you use them correctly. We have them in all our clinics. Um, you can pick one up there. You can, we need to show you how to use it, but they work extremely, extremely well. So what other strategies are we going to use to get rid of this pain in the neck? Well, guess what? Chiropractic adjustment. I've been around the world um, practicing what I do, and I have not found anything that is more effective than chiropractic adjustments. What are we doing with these? Well, we're restoring motion, which reduces pain in itself. We're opening up joints, but very specifically. We know exactly which ones we need to get moving. This facilitates healing. We're improving blood flow. We're releasing endorphins, those feel-good hormones that run around in our blood, making, making us feel good. We're reducing pressure on nerves. We are reducing fibrosis. As we get joints moving, there's going to be less scar tissue buildup. We are helping joints become younger by becoming more elastic. 
we are approving alignment. And another thing that we're doing is we're turning off the sympathetic, the fight or flight, the stress nervous system, and we're turning on the parasympathetics, which means we are, we are bringing the body back into a state of a neurological balance so we can be healthy. We can only sleep, we can only heal, we can only live life healthily if we are, pre if we are mostly in parasympathetic. If we are always stressed, then I'm afraid that takes us towards um, disease, degeneration, and health problems. The fastest way to get out of sympathetic and back into parasympathetic is simply get that, get that tension out of your spine with specific chiropractic adjustments. Okay? Right, I've been talking a lot about pain and, and how we can get over pain. There is always um, a, a warning. Um, if anybody suffers from tingling or numbness, these are times when you, sometimes you need to see a professional. Okay, this is when you, you should not be just stretching or, or applying ice or, or whatever. This is, this is a time when you need to see a professional. If there's tingling and numbness, it means there, are, there is nerve involvement. All right, maybe your nerve's being pinched or compressed. Um, if there is pain that's running down the arms or in the hands or, or down the legs, again, this is not a good sign. If, if, if pain is chronic, if it's constant, again, um, this is probably a sign that there's some degeneration and you should probably see a professional. Loss of strength or coordination, again, pressure on nerves, this is definitely time to see a professional. Um, and headaches, if, you are, uh, uh, receive, if you're feeling headaches every day or migraines every day, then it's highly likely that there are problems in the neck um, that if we can correct them very, very simply, these headaches will go away. So daily headaches is probably a time to see a professional. Um, and if you see structural changes, so if you look in the mirror and, and you see one shoulder's higher than the other, or maybe you, you are aware that your head's come forward, uh, or perhaps, perhaps you, you're, you're developing a twist, or one shoulder's higher than the other, or, or one pelvis, or you, you see a rotation in your structure, or anything like that, structural changes, that's probably a time to, uh, to see a professional. Okay, um, I've gone through a lot of stuff there. I had a lot to cover, I went, I went pretty quickly. Um, I, I don't see any, any um, questions in the chat yet. Uh, if anybody, if I hadn't covered anything, then just put it in the chat. What, what about this, what about that? Today was all about shoulders and neck. I want to give you simple solutions to reduce your neck pain, shoulder pain. Simple, simple solutions. If you follow these, uh, these step, simple steps that I've, that I've gone through, it will, it will help. It will, it's almost guaranteed to help you. Um, if, if, if you know anybody that needs this information, then um, we're gonna be posting this uh, um, on, on our social media. Um, also, uh, as I've said, if anybody wants to t receive a copy of my book, please go ahead, just let us know by email and we'll just attach it send it right back to you. So, I have a question coming. Could you give us some advice on the right type of pillow to use for sleeping? Yes, I can. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that. So, obviously, um, when you are in bed, you are out of gravity. When you're at your desk, you are still in gravity. So, you're more likely to do damage at your desk. That's why I really wanted to cover the ergonomics of work. But the ergonomics of sleep also matters as well. Um, if you think about it, um, your, your spine is probably out of alignment during the day. During your hopefully eight hours or six to eight hours in bed, hopefully you're in, you're in good shape so the tension can come out of your spine. You definitely do not want three pillows pushing your head forward like that because you're gonna make the problem worse. When you're in bed, you want, you, you want a situation where your spine is neutral and you want a situation whereby perhaps you've got a support for the neck so you can actually re recover that curve in the neck. So I myself, I, I use um, um, an ergonomic or chiropractic pillow. Uh, it's shaped like that, so it's actually got a, a dip in the middle so my, my head sits in it, so it's actually got a support for the neck. But what you actually can create um, a good support with any pillow. All you're doing is you're, you're getting it in the neck you're, uh, so it supports the neck. Sometimes I encourage people to actually try without 
without a pillow, you might roll up a towel or something and just put it in the neck. You'll find it very, very reassuring because it's actually putting the curve back in the neck. The, the body wants to have that curve. You will feel much, much better if you can get the curve back in, in your neck. If you're sleeping on your side, you want enough pillow just to support your head. You don't want your head down and you don't want it, it it's pressed all the way up here either. So you, your pillow, really, it's a personal thing. Um, I believe that you can actually adapt almost any pillow to, uh, to do its job, which is to support. So I hope that helps somewhat. Um, any other questions? I don't see any coming. So um, most of what I've been talk talking about is covered in my book. Um, if anybody um, wants to get any more information, please don't hold back. Just contact us. We are here for you. Um, please understand that um, we are here in Singapore. We have five clinics. Um, we, are, we almost always have a clinic fairly close to somebody. So if you know anybody that has, has neck or shoulder pain, please uh, perhaps uh, send them a copy of this, uh, this QR code. Uh, there's all my social media there. If anybody wants to send me an email or request a copy of the book, go ahead there. So I'll just leave that there, uh, up there for a couple of minutes. A couple more questions coming in. To add to the pillow question, I am both a side and a face up sleeper. What will be a good pillow? Um, well, good pillow. Um, as I said, I myself have a, quite a low pillow because I don't want my head pushed forward. Uh, I, I, I use a, a, an ergonomic pillow because I'm very uh, aware that I want to, I want to support uh, the, the curve of my neck. So uh, I sleep on my back also and I sleep on my side. So the pillow I've got works for both. Um, some people like to have two pillows, but when they're on the back, they're only using one. But when they go on their side, they just pull the other pillow so it's doing, it, so it's doing a job. You know, it's being aware of what we're trying to achieve, okay? Just don't be robotic. Just don't sort of just, just go through the, um, the motions. Think about what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a neutral spine, and we're trying to achieve support, okay? So I hope that helps. Uh, are, are these slides available to us? Yes. As I said, we're, we're going to be sending this. This is going to go out to, uh, uh, on our social media. It will be, uh, um, it will be available. If anybody specifically wants me to send the actual slides, then just go ahead and, and, and let me know, and I can do that. What is the best posture to sleep on back, left, or right side? Interesting question. So um, they say that sleeping on your back is the best. Um, I'm, I myself sleep between my back and, uh, and my side. Is, is, is left or right better? Well, anatomically, the left is the better. And why is that? It's, it's, not, because, it's, not, it's not because of uh, where anything is. It's, it's other than the shape of the, uh, the stomach. The stomach is shaped like that. It's a holding vessel. If you sleep on the right side, the holding vessel is upside down and it could, it could possibly tip the, uh, the acid of your stomach into your esophagus. So if, if there is an argument, then I would say better to sleep on your left if you sleep on your side, but uh, I'm not really too fussed. Uh, if, you, if you're getting older and you start to get acid reflux, then you definitely really want, want to be on your back or on your left side. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, uh, if, if anybody wants a PDF copy of the book, Posse Matters, a copy, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, okay, I think we're getting to the end. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, as I said, I, I'm here to help. If anybody has any questions, uh, don't hold back. Just contact us. I'm, 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 I'm here for you. Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.